Good afternoon. <clears throat> so I'm Chris, and I work for Hope Lab, a small nonprofit down in the South Bay, San Francisco. And um, I kind of have a unique perspective, I think, to share in terms of my presence here at the conference, and that I'm not a consultant, so I don't go into organizations uh, with a contract to provide some service. Uh, I actually am in the organization providing improv and other kinds of training activities. So I live in the organization, I'm a part of it, I'm a part of the culture, the culture impacts me, I impact it. So it's a very, it's an interesting way to practice. We brought improv to Hope Lab a couple of years ago. Uh, it struck me that the principles, what little I knew about improv, it struck me that the principles of improv, there was something there that I thought could really help our culture, and something there that resonated for us. So I had some conversations with Chris Sams, brought them into our workplace, and we had a great time. How does this? Oop. It's on the side. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, technology. So, as has been mentioned, our first reaction to, to my staff's first reaction to improv was, oh, it's performance, it's comedy, I can't do that, how can I possibly do improv, I mean. But we brought them in after two years of convincing them, and click. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. We had, um, John come in and we did a lot of games. People really enjoyed themselves and we played a lot. You'll see we continue to play. And our staff who are two thirds introverts actually came out of their shelves and we actually had some really amazing time together. And the thread of that just continued on after the workshop. We continued to play together and really explore our creativity um, with a lot of fun, as you'll see here. So, Despite having a lot of introverts, we have some people who are really willing to take the risk and to, to really play and have some fun. This is a presentation of our strategic plan, actually, <laughs> which was done in the, the frame of Dr. Seuss, so we all dressed up for that. And then there's me uh, celebrating a pregnant colleague. <laughs> but, um, so that was the event, um, and following the event, was the opportunity to just think about, well, how do I actually get this into our culture more deeply? So, uh, we had, again, we had fun, it was really enjoyable. I think people took away something of value from the workshop, but how do we actually keep, uh, deep, more deeply embed this into our culture? And uh, I wasn't sure how to do that, actually. Um, and so I ended up taking a, one of the foundational classes at BATS, the Intensive Foundation, and had a pretty amazing experience. And there I had an epiphany, I think, for me about what improv is really all about. And so, um, in this course, Laura Derry, who's here, uh, that did one particular exercise where you have to act a character and then every 10 seconds she rings a bell and you have to switch to a new character. And then 10 seconds, another character, and on and on and on about 10 times. And so for me, as I was thinking about this, I thought I had all these ideas of things I could do. Okay, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that. Uh, but then when I actually got up there, I did those three things. But then when it came to round four and five and six and seven and eight, I had no idea what to do. What I discovered is that in that moment, something just came out of me. And so, so sort of letting go of the, of the, having to let go of the opportunity to plan and to think, I was forced to just see what came out of me quite naturally from my core. And it actually was funny, it was interesting, sometimes it was wise, but it was beautiful. And it just gave me the sense that, that what improv provided me was this opportunity to think about this precious moment uh, that can be formed and, and created through improvisation. So I brought that back, that idea back to Hope Lab and began to think about well, how do I create this precious moment for people in my organization? How do I do it for the individuals in my organization, but how do we create this collectively for each other? And so again, being part of the culture, uh, I began to experiment. And so we began doing improvisational check-in exercises at meetings, we began playing with this at retreats, we began playing with this in our health and wellness program, we began, began playing with it in so many different ways, um, and just kind of using as any, many opportunities as we could to kind of bring this alive and create these moments for people to shine, for their genius to come out. 
And it's been a wonderful experience and that, that there is magic in that moment. And the more that we could, the more we were able to create the safety for our introverts and others to really take that courageous step and to let go of their fears, let go of their preconceptions, let go of planning, show up with each other in that moment, uh, that magic happened. And out of that magic, we became more creative, more innovative, we became more compassionate with each other, uh, became more awake. I mean, so much happened that's at the stage for us being a successful organization. So that's what I believe the power of improv has been for us. We certainly are not perfect, we haven't learned everything, but this experiment continues, and it's an experiment that I love, and it's a great practice. Thank you.